when it comes to the additional parts of the tefillah that are thrown in or inserted at different points of the year, the question comes up usually when a person by mistake forgets to put it in. But there are some times where a person accidentally puts in a part of the tefillah which he's not supposed to put in. For example, coming out of the Aset Met a person is very much in the habit of saying HaMelech HaKadosh, or he's in the habit of saying Zochein L'Chaim, the different insertions that are put in. The question is, if a person accidentally inserted something like Ya'alev Yavo or something else into the tefillah when it's not called for him, what is the halacha in that case? Interestingly, it's brought down and once read that the Chafetz Chaim, Bichodov Atzmo, he one time and the Arvit, right following Ne'ilah, he said HaMelech HaKadosh. And he wanted to find out whether or not he had to repeat the Shemona Asim. So he looked into the Mishnah Berura, which he himself wrote. And he discovered that he did not include this halacha. And he had at that point a, a, a big sense of Kharishut Hadat, a certain amount of discouragement. How could he have left out uh, such a common halacha, he felt. Until he looked up the halacha, and of course he found out what the halacha is, but he, it, it pained him that he didn't include it. But what, what is the halacha in such a case? So Moran writes in Siman Kufchet, Hatoeu maskir meora sha'ar, meora sha'ar yamim bitfilash lo bizman. A person who mentions something that is not called for in the tefillah, meaning he, Ya'alev Yavo, for example, he thought it was supposed to be Rosh Chodesh yesterday. And really it's not until today. So he said, Ya'alev Yavo, Moran writes, Lo have saka. That's not considered a, an interruption. For example, a person would interrupt in the middle of the tefillah, whether it's the sicha with conversation or a pause, a silent pause, which goes over too long. He has to restart the Shemona Asrei. Maran writes, these types of interruptions, meaning an uncalled for addition, which is not the day for it, not, it's not considered hafsakam. Mishnah Bura brings down that most achronim, rov achronim, argue. And they say that this is no worse than interrupting with speech, because this is not the day. Therefore, they would say that a person does have to go back. However, even those achronim would agree that you only have to go back in a case where what you said was what Mishnah Bura calls sheker, when it's a lie. If you say, for example, Zochreinu l'chaim, Kotveinu l'chaim, during the days when it's not a said made tshuvam, so that's false. Today is not the day where HaKadosh Baruch Hu is writing us in the Book of Life, or, or otherwise, Zachman Nitzan. So that's a false interruption. If a person says, Ya'alev Yavo b'yom Rosh Chodesh Hazem, when it's not Rosh Chodesh, that's false. And therefore, he would have to repeat Shemona Asseh according to those Achronim. However, Lachal Ma'asem, according to Chamo Vadya, Mikar Hadin, the Halakha follows Maran, which is that these types of uncalled for additions are not considered Hafsaka, like Maran writes explicitly, and therefore, strictly speaking, you do not have to repeat the Shemona Asseh. So even if a person, let's say, you know, got Farblodjin yesterday, he thought it was Rosh Chodesh yesterday, he said, Ya'alev Yavo, not called for, it was not Rosh Chodesh, nonetheless, he would not have to repeat the Shemona Asrim. Nonetheless, Hamavadiyah recommends that in order to satisfy all the poskim, a person would have a right to repeat the Shemona Asrim, al tnai ibn Dava. He could give an optional or a donated tefillah, and that way he makes the condition, look, if I have to repeat the Shemona Asrim like those Achronim hold, then this counts as my obligation. If not, then this is merely in addition, a person should, of course, try to have the utmost concentration during that repeated Shemona Asrim, because if it's in fact a donation, it should be as as uh, as good as possible. Be fine, yeah. Snap, no. Okay. Yeah. We do. Uh-uh.